Our topic today is Here Comes the Sun. And you know, God has a funny, funny, funny bone. <laughs> Two reasons. It's very overcast. In fact, it's supposed to rain today while I'm filming, filming this. So I will not be outside. Right now you see a little touch of blue, which is beautiful. But it's overcast. Secondly, I have a sinus infection <laughs> with my antibiotics. I can't be out in the sun for very long. So... Here's my intro. <laughs> Here comes the sun. Welcome. Whether you have found me this morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you're here. And I hope you enjoy today's topic on Here Comes the Sun. Well, welcome. I'm really glad you're here. I'm back inside. Uh, it is a very overcast day as I'm recording this. And, it, and again, the irony. Here comes the sun. Warm weather homemaking. And you hear... I uh, am a little, a little bit banned from being outside at this time. So, uh, <laughs> I love this chapter. It talks about some great ideas of what you can do uh, to get your family outside. And the dilemma that we run into as homemakers when, you know, we, we have our jobs just like anyone else who leaves the home. And our jobs usually consist of, you know, cleaning or cooking and things of that nature. But... Also, of course, number one, caring for those kids. With that said, uh, she talk, she does talk about what do you do when you've got this list of chores you need to do that day, and yet you've got a beautiful break in the weather. Well, I want to encourage you, just, just as you would in the fall or any other time of year, you, of course, need to take time and make sure that you get those chores done that need to be done. You, you need clean clothes so that you can wear them. So take the time to do those things but maybe you can spread that out and one of the things she goes into a lot of detail in in this in this session is line drying and how some people really love line drying their their clothes during the warm weather or their sheets for me definitely more like the sheets or uh, thinner fabrics I, I prefer line drying those but I don't have a lineup and have not for years I will wash my rugs and hang them out over the deck, um, and sometimes I'll do that with my comforters this time of year, but or as the weather warms up. But honestly, my washer and dryer are downstairs, and I don't want to haul up wet laundry upstairs to the deck um, to to um, line dry, which is the only place my husband agreed to have a line at one time. But she encourages you there's so many different things we can do outside you know sometimes we have chores outside my husband primarily takes care of the outdoors however sometimes i feel like oh you know what i should gift him my once a year weeding <laughs> so i'll go out and i'll weed once a year for sure i do do it when he asks me if he needs help i'm i'm happy to help but or actually i kind of begrudgingly do it because i don't like weeding but i'm sure he doesn't either so uh she talks about setting a picnic table and sorting through your mail or bring out your bills and pay your bills outside and um you fold your laundry outside you know there's lots of different things you can do outside so that you're getting outdoors on those lovely days especially if you can be outdoors with your kids when they're playing in the yard and um listening to those laughs and giggles and all that fun stuff delves into a lot is did you know that uh, May is National Salad Month? I didn't know that. I do love my salads. Um, I love the ease of the prepackaged salads that they have today. Um, but she does talk about trying some unusual combinations and uh, salad greens with diced papaya or mango. Uh, someone years ago made a spinach salad with strawberries in it and I loved it. I still love that to this day. Uh, so there's a lot of fun, neat, yummy things out there, and the internet has so many recipes available at, at your fingertips. Uh, look in your cookbooks, you'd be surprised at some of the salads that are listed in there. Um, and I'm not talking about drenching everything, but just uh, my friend, and I'm trying to remember what her number, number was, but she would... Um, her and her daughter were vegetarian, and they would... Uh, now I see, I should probably text her and find out for sure. But they would make a game of it. How many, um, I think they had a minimum of 10 items that they would chop up and put in their salad. And when she was over and she told me that one time, I went, really? So, you know, I would try 
and it was like, what, what do you put in there? You know, uh, you, there's romaine lettuce and, you know, and, and you're starting to care and you're going, boy, that's, that's not very many, but she, yeah, they, their goal was 10, minimum 10. That's what makes a good salad minimum 10. And you know, it's amazing to me how, when you have so many of those different vegetables and, um, things that they would put in there that you didn't even at times want a dressing because there was so much flavor between all of those items. So that was really, really, really incredible. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things I wanted to talk about, and it's not talked about in this chapter at all, but one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, the sun. And part of getting ready for the sun is to think about protecting your skin. And, and that's probably one of those things that came to mind probably because I can't, number one, even when I'm not on an antibiotic, um, it doesn't take long for me to burn in the sun. So some quick tips about sun, uh, sunblock. Now you can research this and you can see all this stuff, but this is some of the training I had when I was, um, a beauty consultant. So in the training, it talks about, um, there are, there are two main, uh, there's a UVA light and UVB, right? So the UVA rays or the UVA, yeah, UVA rays, they're the ones that are the aging rays. They're the ones that you, causes your skin to do all that wrinkling and so on. And you get the spots and things of that. The UVB rays are burning. So A, aging, B, burning. <clears throat> now that, what that means with the burning is uh, with that, that's what tan, you tan, so on and so forth, because what's happening is your skin um, is reacting to uh, whatever uh, melanin that's in your skin. And I have a mottled melanin, which is what causes the freckling. And so that means that for a long time, in my case, I did not wear sunblock uh, much as a child. It wasn't until I started working on a farm that I started wearing sunblock. So that I would have been about nine years old at that time. But in the meantime, I, my nose was always red, sunburnt, peeled. In fact, I have spots on my skin, on my nose where there, there aren't any freckles because there were, there's so many layers that had, had burnt and peeled off over the years. And I have over here, I have had a, a cancer spot removed. So like, it is crazy what happens with the sun, but we didn't know so much back then um, about sun protection and why it was so important to use a sunblock. So it's good to have a quality sunblock. That's important. You need to know a little bit of information about those sunblocks though. First of all, you need to know a little bit about you too. So I know that in about, I can be out in the sun and by about 10 minutes, my skin starts to burn. It's, it hurts. My skin literally hurts in the sun before it starts that before you start seeing pink. So that means there's already burning going on. So let's just say 10 minutes is when I, when I start to burn or if start to tan, whichever it is, 10 minutes for me, it's I, that's when my skin starts to burn. So when I get an SPF 20 for, let's say a 20, that gives me 20 times protection, 10 minutes. Okay. So what is that number? <clears throat> Let's figure that out real quick. Okay. I had to do my math real quick because off the top of my head, I couldn't remember. So if, if I'm using SPF 20 and I burn in 10 minutes, you multiply SPF of 20 by the 10 minutes and I get 200 minutes where I can go with that, with that layer of sunblock. That gives me about three hours and 20 minutes out in the sun. Now, the key, if I want to be out longer, the key is I have to get out of the sun, out of those rays. I have to use soap and water and remove that sunblock. And then I need to reapply the sunblock if I want to go back out for longer. 
that's not true just for my skin. That is true for everybody's skin. So when people say sunblock doesn't work, I was using it all day. Either one, one they put it on only one time, or when they put it on the second time, what happens is you put, a, let's say after those three hours, I put a layer on top of, it cuts the protection, I think it's in half. So then I only have like an hour and a half where the next layer helps because what happens is there's a chemical reaction that occurs and it breaks down that sunblock. So it's really, really important. So I'm 45. I had this removed about 10 years ago. So I was about 35 the first time I had something removed. It is so crucial. I have other spots. If you see darker, darker um, freckles, those are areas to be concerned about. Uh, those are those areas that have um, a, quite a bit of damage. Um, there's a freckles in my eye caused by sun damage as well. So it doesn't just affect your skin. It affects lots of your, uh, lots of different parts of your body. So make sure those kiddos are very well protected. I'm sure you do that already, moms and dads, but it's so important that you um, really take the time and don't just protect them, protect yourselves. So I was going to show you my house this week with um, my, my May, June, July decorating. Or actually, no, it's for the summer. June, July, August, May, June, July, August. Uh, but I'm not going to get to that today since this is going a little bit longer than I expected. But I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I cannot wait for next week because, Lord willing, this sinus infection will be completely done. I'll be off my antibiotic and um, I'll be able to show you my beautiful decorations, which my family is wonderful and helps me with all of that stuff. So. Maybe I'll share a little about that. There is a chocolate fondue recipe. And uh, you know what? Next week, we'll try and do that as well. And uh, next week is Dream On, planning for summer. So blessings to you. And I just pray that um, you are you enjoy this, this little bit of information that I've shared with you today. And um, take some time to find those simple little activities, even if it's bubble blowing out outside or you know sidewalk chalk you know the kids love it when we when we get down with them and do that kind of stuff but if you feel like you can't just try and find a way to get outside with them so that they're enjoying this weather and that you well not this weather i love this weather but uh, we're talking about the sun here so if you enjoy the sun find a way to get out so that they can enjoy it and if you need that extra protection too add an umbrella that's what i do all right take care everyone love you and god bless